Welcome back, geology fans. We ended last episode at the tree line on the west side of Dinosaur Ridge. Above the tree line, we have entered the Dakota Formation, which starts with some fantastically cross-bedded sandstones. Our best bet is we are still fluvial, but we will get our best look at the Dakota Sandstone on the east side of the ridge when we look at the top of the beds. But before we cross the ridge, we find a beautiful ash layer, which we can date. And the dates come out to 105 million years ago. How exciting! We are definitely in the Cretaceous period now, and flowering plants, the angiosperms, have finally appeared in the fossil record, and the world is finally blessed with flowers and birds. Standing at the top of this hill, we have come to the time when the world is in bloom. On our traditional field trip, we reboard the time machine bus and drive slowly down the slope through the early Cretaceous to observe the relevant features in the sandstones. The most obvious sedimentary structures are ripples. We are looking at the top of these beds, but we already should know that from superposition. These start as asymmetrical ripples indicating unidirectional flow, but as we proceed down the slope and forward in time, we see the sand get punctuated with occasional fine-grained layers, and the ripples begin to appear more symmetrical. This is indicative of wave motion, which causes bidirectional or oscillatory flow. We are once again at beachfront property. The metal structure here marks a set of iguanodon and raptor footprints. The tour guides will tell a lovely story about the raptors chasing the iguanodon family on the beach. It was certainly on the beach, but it is less certain these individuals were even here at the same time. But hey, dinosaurs on the beach! This must mean a transgression of sea levels at foot. As we dive deeper into the Cretaceous period, we are entering the hothouse state of our planet when all ice caps melt. This causes seas worldwide to rise, but they are also starting to rise from thermal expansion and a more rapid seafloor spreading, which causes the seafloor to rise up and push the oceans onto land. All this means that we are having a seaway encroaching from the north, the Dakota Formation is deposited on the western shore of this encroaching intercontinental seaway. As we approach the bottom, we see oyster shells, fish scales, and the scrape marks from crocodile claws. There is another vegetation break at the bottom of this slope, which lets us know we are leaving the Dakota Formation and entering the next formation, the Benton Shale. On our charts, 3B is the Dakota Sandstone, the principal resistant unit making up the Dakota Hogback. Its minerals are quartz in the grains and cement, making this formation hard and resistant to erosion. Some hematite is present as cement, and at the top we see more and more clay as well. The grain size is all one millimeter or less. The age for this site can be given as 100 million years ago, though it ranges from 108 to 94 million years ago. The environment is a beach, and the event is the transgression of the intercontinental sea from the north. As this finger of sea finally breached the barrier separating it from a finger from the south in Texas, our area goes underwater with a pulse of organic rich waters. As we leave Dinosaur Ridge, we will cross a great expanse that we will call Site 4. The black shale at the vegetation line, which is topographically below yet stratigraphically above the Dakota, is 4A, the Benton Shale. The organic rich waters deposited organic rich shale, making it black and a good source rock for petroleum. Frequent ash layers come from volcanoes to the west in Utah and result in an altered ash clay called bentonite, which was named after this formation where it outcrops in Rock River, Wyoming. This swelling clay is notorious for destroying infrastructure and foundations through its expansion when wet and contraction when dry. Our minerals are clays, and we should note this is organic rich, and the grain size is just clay. Benton Shale ash beds put this about 90 million years old, and the environment is the western side of the Western Interior Seaway at a depth of about 200 feet below the surface of this seaway. The event is a transgression of the sea in the Cretaceous hothouse. In some places we see the Niobrara limestone, which is a good petroleum producer thanks to its association with the organic-rich Benton Shale, 
but here it did not deposit. 